Oh yeah. Welcome back to the channel. So in front of us we have a new arrival. And as you can see it is a Peugeot 206. And if you go around to the back of it you can see that it's an estate. And it's a 1.4 HDI, so you know 60 horsepower or something like that. But it hasn't been run for about eight months or something, seven months. So let's see if it likes to start up. The key could possibly do with a repair, but let's see. It's got life in it. It's got spider webs in it. It's out of gear. Yes! So it does start, but let's see what we need to do to get it back on the road. And immediately, as we can see, it has got a tyre which is flat. So in the meantime, let's test this shitter out and see how long it takes to blow the shitter up. And that took about two minutes. We've got um, a little bit of temperature showing and the heat is a nice and warm, so that's a good sign. Um, if, we, if we do this, we can hear that it's purring now. But if we... Uh, as soon as we take it above tick over, it smooths out nicely, so I'll try and see what's actually rattling. And off a quick look, can't really see anything obvious. That might not be helping much, or it could be attention or something but fuck that for now what i should have done before i start is i should have tested it to see if there's any liquid t-rex in it which there is so let's put that back in let's close the bonnet then let's see how well or how badly it drives all right clutch feels all right actually amber it's been left on so hopefully it's not seized on Yes, we have momentums. All 68 horsepowers. And engine wise, not too bad. We have got a little bit of a rattle from a drop link or something. Um, and the gear selector is a little bit of a long throw on it, but there is a bigger issue, and that is this. Yes. Don't know if you can tell that, but the rear suspension isn't doing anything. And this might show it better, but if I shake the car, then you can see that it's only moving on the tyre which is not ideal. Now, I've done a bit of research into these, and they are, well, they're not unknown for the rear radius arm bushes season up, which wouldn't be getting done. Fuck that. Um, I am hopeful that it might be probably wrong. Uh, it might just be seized uh, dampers. So I'm going to try and distinguish. So if I squeeze my hand into this gap and find the gap, can't really see but I've got my fingers in between the gap where the radius arm is and where it joins to the rear subframe and then if I rock the car a little bit now which I'll have to do with my head because I'm using both hands yes pretty much impossible to demonstrate but if I have my finger in between the gap so that's the gap of the radius arm but it's not that's a, a tire obviously um, I can feel that the radius arm which should pivot around going up and down it's moving like this, this much. That's all it's got. And that could be promising. Either the bearing's collapsed on both sides and where the bearing is, it's stuck because the, the, the needle roll is in the bearing and it's stuck between two and it's just not going past them. Or the movement I'm feeling is the flex in the bushes, the flex in those bushes, which you can't really see, but those bushes, on the end of the shock absorbers. So. No, no, no. How do we distinguish which bit is the foot's bit without using any tools and getting underneath it to um, take the shockers off? 
and, and disconnect them and rule them out. Well, we can use two good features of this car. One, it seems to have a really good handbrake, and two, the fact that it has radius arm suspension, which means that if I put the handbrake on and try and drive the car backwards and forwards, it is gonna lift the suspension if I go backwards and push it down if I go forwards. So I'm gonna do that and see what happens. So I'm gonna see what happens from here. And that quite clearly shows that we do have some movement at least. So now I'm gonna try and stick my phone under there, try and get a closer look at what's going on from under here. And we can see from that angle that it is also definitely moving. In fact, if I grab the roof rack and give it a bit of a shake, it is actually definitely moving a little bit now. It's still a little bit solid though, it's moving more on the tyres and the suspension. But let's go and drive it and see if it feels any better. And uh, it still feels pretty hard. So the only way I can describe it is it feels like it's massively oversprung. It feels like the car is too light for the suspension. I mean, I've had cars that are as hard as this on the suspension. In fact, I've had cars that are harder than this on the suspension, but they've been like a lot closer to the floor than this. But apart from that, and the relatively annoyance of what sounds like a rattling drop, that it drives all right. Um, considering the only reason I've got it is because I saved it from being weighed in. Um, it could be a lot worse. So the rear axle anyway, I think what I can do with that is, is I'll just try and free it off, maybe get a little bit of heat into it, some grease into it or something. Um, I won't be changing the rear axle. If it doesn't free off enough to pass an MOT, or if it fails an MOT as it is, or if it turns out that the radius arm bushes are actually the shag, then it looks like it might end up going to scrap. But we'll see if we can just get a few months out of it at least before it does. And that brings us to this point. Right, so if you watch now, as I jack up the car, the suspension does drop down, as you would expect when jacking a car up. Um, so it's not seized up. And I thought to myself, well, maybe, maybe it is actually a damper that seized off. And I took one of them off, and it was exactly the same, it was still stiff. Um, so it's a bit strange, I've still not got to the bottom of this. I'm going to take this wheel off and see if I can see anything and possibly get a closer look and to look what the problem is. Now, this is the bush, the burring in question. So inside there, you've got a burn on the inside, a burn on the outside, and these are what sees up and cause problems. Um, the way that this works is, this is a torsion beam, a well, torsion rear suspension. That is the spring, and that goes all the way through to the other side and connects to on splines at this end and on splines at the other end, and it actually twists as the spring. There's our damper which I saw taken off, which made no difference. That is the anti-roll bar. So that goes through there and it connects both sides together, which means that when one goes up, it has to twist the other side, like an anti-roll bar would do. So behind here, inside there, we have got a burring here and a burring here. And these, like I said, are what caused the problem. Now the fact that it's moving at all gives me a little bit of hope but I do think that is stiff. So I think that this is the problem. So I'm gonna try and get some grease into there. And the way I'm gonna try and do that is by fitting a grease nipple. And I'm gonna fit it to, there is a part there which looks like it is designed to take a grease nipple. So when I drill that out, that is a maybe 1.25, that is not a 6.25, a 6.2 millimetre drill is what it's supposed to be. It's actually whatever the fuck that is. It's about six and three quarter mil, something like that. So I'm gonna drill through the, like so, after carefully moving the handbrake cable and bracket. Yeah. 
Yes. So now let's install liberal quantities of um, a professional cutting compound, which this isn't. Yes. Before running an M8, the 1.25 tap into the hole and cutting a thread. So that is one side drilled and one grease nipple. Uh, carefully installed and ready to be filled with grease. Now the thing is when you're putting grease into a grease nipple, the really important thing is to try and hold it as straight as possible. And it might take quite a lot of grease, but you just need to keep on pumping it until, until you run out of grease or it comes out somewhere. Um, and then you can put this back on and uh, put it back together and do the other side. Which has the torsion bar in the way, so I've just put it a bit further in, if you can see there. Yes. So let's pump that full of grease and let's see how it drives. Yes. And the answer is, it's actually better. It's still a little bit bumpy, but it's definitely better than it was. So what I need to do now is put it in for an MRT. Yes. And as you can see, it's failed, but not miserably. And not on anything big enough to warrant filming and making a video out of. So I'm gonna get it sorted, I'm gonna get it tapped, I'm gonna drive the shitter, and then I'll probably flog it. Um, see how it is. But that's it for this one. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It's a bit of a useless video, I think, but it is what it is. That's what we're here for. Um, see you next time.